Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. Today I'm talking about churches exposed, denomination errors, okay? And these denomination errors, I am relating to the Bible. There are some things that some of these uh, denominations will talk about, um, and they'll talk about in such a way to reinforce uh, whatever their uh, precepts are, okay, um, their laws, their uh, additional books that go right alongside of the Bible. And when they push things, when it comes to man-made religion, this is when they end up losing some people. I'm not going to call out specific denominations because I know that there are a number of people that are from all walks of life that tune into YouTube and Enterprise 7, and I really don't want to ruffle your feathers today. But I do suggest that some of you all, when you're attending these churches, you need to do your, res your research and make sure that you are not joining a church that is uh, participating in heresy, okay, a church that um, is in error. And when I say join, I mean walk down an aisle and become a member. You can visit. There's nothing wrong with visiting, especially when you know that God has led you to a church. Absolutely nothing wrong with visiting. But when they have some serious issues, okay, uh, with just basic uh, doctrine, okay, things that we all know, God uh, wants us to follow and they have issues with that. Um, rest assured, uh, God is not pleased. Okay. And some of them, once again, will change things in the Bible to suit their needs, to suit uh, what the people want, to bring in more numbers. OK, because a lot of a lot of these churches are operating under business models. And I talked about this um, in my past videos um, on the lukewarm church or lukewarm churches, I should say. So uh, by all means, check out those videos. Um, I put those together years ago. But some of these uh, doctrinal errors, uh, there's an emphasis placed on one has to get this in order to get that when it comes to, you know, faith in Christ. Um, one church will accept Jesus, but won't accept uh, God and uh, the Holy Spirit. Another church uh, will uh, look at Jesus is just a teacher and nothing special, not the son of God. And then you have other ones who they will uh, preach a once saved, always saved uh, doctrine, which I get into years ago, um, you know, and that is incorrect. There's a lot of stuff that people will say and do. And if I feel good going to the church because you're making me feel that way. Um, then yes, I'm more likely to give, I'm more likely to become a member. So this is why some of them will teeter, um, around some controversial subject matter, but doesn't the Bible say this, the zealous Christian says, right? Well, yes, it does, but they got a butt for it, right? Because they want to make sure that they're not offending. You got some denominations that don't believe in hell. You got other denominations that are very, very focused in on, uh, 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 heaven, but won't talk about anything negative, nothing negative, um, nothing that, um, is going to make people angry. So they're going to skip over certain scriptures that talk about lifestyle and how God is against certain lifestyles. And then they're going to skip over scriptures that talk about the way we should live. Um, you know, those blatant scriptures, those ones that make people just kind of, oh no, I think I'm, I'm really messed up right now because I've been sinning. They're going to avoid those. And of course, if I'm giving you a soft watered down message, okay, you're going to be more likely to continue to tune in. But if I start going into your camp and telling you, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't be laying up in the bed with this one and that one. And if I start going into your personal business, right? And some folks stay out of my business and all this other stuff. Okay. Of course, you're not going to want to stick around because it's a convicting message. And so this is why we get all these denominations. The minute things got crazy or got disturbing or got uncomfortable or people just didn't want to go along with any programming, uh, they started breaking off into other denominations. And then there's a denomination on top of a denomination. Uh, one church, they believe in uh, musical instruments. Another church, nope, we don't believe in musical instruments, but yet they both carry on the same names. Okay. 
You got some who believe that you got to go through a man in order to get uh, forgiveness of sin where others believe in going straight to uh, God through Jesus. So when you see this sort of stuff rising up, okay, with all of these different denominations, that is key. Or you do your research. That is key not to join. Fellowship is great that Jesus was doing that. He was going around. He was fellowshipping with this one and that one, you know, breaking bread, um, uh, healing, uh, ministering and all of that. But what you don't see in a Bible is Jesus being a member of. OK, because he knew even back in his days that some of what those people were saying and doing was not right. OK, and he knew that these folks were more focused on their religion and their uh, their routines and uh, their traditions and customs. And Jesus wasn't one of them. So for some of you all, uh, if you really look closely at Jesus's ministry, um, especially in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, you will see that he would be considered radical even nowadays. And most of these Pharisee minded folks would not be on board with Jesus. Um, then you have some of these denominations where they believe that they are the only church and that their group is going to heaven, but not yours. <laughs> OK. And so once again, you see this sort of stuff rising up. This is not the time to be saying, oh, well, I can't stand these people. These people are ridiculous and all that and being, you know, bitter and upset and angry. All you do is just be respectful you know, be polite. They want you to join the members, join uh, the group. No, I don't want to be a member of. I'm just here to visit. That's it. They put too much pressure on you or they start saying, well, you got to perform or you got to do this, that and the other. That's when you find another church. OK, I've learned this over the years. I'm telling you, because God will have us as believers go to a church during a season. OK, you are not there for a lifetime. You are there for a season. And usually once you get into uh, a, a, a space of teaching, right? Where you're preaching to folks or talking to folks or advising, or you, you just know that God is moving you to say certain things. Once you get on that level, they, they don't want you to uh, stick around anyway, but we don't give up though. We don't say, Oh, well, now that this church has kicked me out and I don't seem to get along with anybody and all this other stuff, I guess I'm just not going, you know, fellowship anymore. And all. No, you can continue to be out there, you know, but you allow the Lord to lead you because sometimes people prematurely speak and they show too much passion, too much zealousness and so forth. And it isn't any wonder why they end up becoming disgruntled. OK, because they were jumping you know, the gun, like a, you know, person that's uh, getting ready to run a race. Okay. A track star, if you will, the gun goes off and they jump ahead instead of waiting. Okay. Or before the gun, I should say before the gun goes off, they jump ahead. Um, so you don't want to be that one. You want to always be in tune to the Lord. Some of us, we go into churches and we're in stealth mode. Okay. They don't know who we are. And so they'll come and they'll talk to us as if we don't, you know, as if we are, we don't know uh, too much of anything, which sometimes that's a beautiful thing because this way I can get to connect with some folks, talk to some people, do what it is that God called me to do. And then I'm out. <laughs> okay. So you know, some folks, so they go in and they look the part, uh, they've got the decorated hat and I am the pastor's wife and all of that. Did God tell you to do all of that going into this church? I mean, and so they become a target for any number of things. Oh, well, what denomination are you a part of? Oh, you're a part of that one. You do know that, uh, your, your, uh, church is in error. Uh, well, what about your church? I'm just here to visit. But now that you brought this to my attention, now you got two Christians going back and forth, uh, over the scriptures. Okay. So there is a time for, uh, you, saying who you are, who you represent and what have you. And then there's a time just to be quiet and just be there. OK, and you can always tell people who want to start challenging you on your faith or your denomination or what have you. You can always tell them I'm not at liberty to get into those types of discussions. God has not released me. And besides, I am a peacemaker. And then they just might leave you alone. Now, if they press the issue, you can always get away from folk like that. OK, um, because we are not sent into churches to be quarreling with these people. Um, if there is some serious issues that need to be addressed and you address them and you make sure there's witnesses, 
Um, and you can always supply some evidence and proof as God leads. But most of the time, Christians uh, talking with Christians or Christians visiting churches and all of that, um, usually we're all on the same mission. And that same mission is, is that we're supposed to be talking about God and winning souls for Christ. That's what it, it boils down to. We're really not supposed to be, and I'm, I've been learning this over the years, we're really not supposed to be going into a fellow sister or brother's ministry and telling them where they're all wrong, okay? Just like God used you to have your ministry and how you talk to people and do things um, with people, the same thing goes uh, for me. Um, unless somebody is doing something that's just blatantly crazy, you really shouldn't be going in there messing around and saying, you know, mean spirited things and doing any number of negative things to your fellow brother or sister in Christ, irregardless of what their denomination is whether you agree or don't agree. But once again, you have some of these uh, folks who grew up in churches where that is what was going on. There was a lot of uh, preaching that we are better than they are. And we know this and we know that. And this group is a cult and these people are, well, whether it's true or not, the point is, is that we are supposed to be about God's business, kingdom business. Okay. And we're not talking about business in the sense of uh, profits, okay? Um, where the business, where there's a business model um, in the place of where God should be, okay? So that is just something that I've learned over the years and continue to learn as I'm sitting down and talking with folks and uh, visiting uh, different churches. You know, we just cannot get mixed up with the argument arguments, okay, uh, especially amongst each other, because the enemy wants to get our minds off of God so that we'll be so frustrated and stressed and tensed up that we're not reading the word like we're supposed to. We're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. Okay, so. I thank you as always for taking the time out of your busy schedule to listen. You've been listening to YouTube NM Enterprise 7. Subscribe today. Also, check the description box for anything that might be of interest. And we do welcome donations. Blessings to you.